Hey, what's up? This is CCG Prime. I'm coming to you guys with a new series in regards to seasonal progression. This is a screenshot I took 21, well, I guess technically 22 days into the Season 1 server. And my goal for Season 2 is to get full completion, level 61, full pin gear in one week. And that's all going to start with this video, which is prep. Let's get started. The first thing you have to take into consideration and start saving, even if you're working on your seasonal one right now, like if you're if you have goals, I would probably complete your goals. But if you just kind of want to get max, then it might be a good idea for you to wait till season two. But the first thing you want to take into consideration is stacks. I make my own stacks. Um, before I did Bartali's adventure log, I even made my own hundred stacks so whenever I get these I just use them whenever like it doesn't really bother me but I would suggest saving 10 stacks 20 stacks 40 stacks and 60 stacks those are the ones that you're gonna need to reach full pin I got full pin off 40 stacks I will tell you it was a huge pain like I failed pin so many times and I actually buy outfits for cronstones and even with cronstones like I've ended up spending like two and a half billion on outfits like just to get all my gear to full pin so saving stacks now will help you a lot in the meantime. In season two, I'm not sure if Fugar is going to give you the 40 and 60 stacks for free or not, but if he does, then you can use that to get your gear to pin. Accessories take smaller stacks than your armor and weapons. Um, I don't have, I already accepted all of the quests, but he has quests under chat for when you're Armor and weapons um, reach try and tet. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you get seven forty stacks, and then seven sixty stacks. So the sixty stacks you don't get enough to have a sixty stack on every pin attempt. But like I said, the accessories have a higher chance anyway. The second thing you want to start saving is going to be. Cron stones. Now, if you type in chat, everybody's going to tell you something different in regards to cron stones. So, the first step would be to figure out if you personally want to use them or not. Is are the gains you're going to make by using them worth it? So, buying from the blacksmith, cron stones cost two million. Buying from the central market, they cost a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. A tiny bit over one million each. And what you do is you buy outfits, you put pre-orders in, and sometimes it can uh, happen in an hour. Sometimes it can take three days before you get an outfit. But every outfit is going to get you 330 crons if it is a premium outfit. So you extract these at the blacksmith, and as you can see, the extraction available is 36 cron stones. I do Valk's Cries a little bit too, because I build my own stacks, and... Sometimes if I'm going for a 44, like I hate getting that success if I'm at like 40. So I'll get to like 39 or 38 and then just use Valk's Cries to get it up to like 44 or whatever I need it. When I was doing my seasonal, um, it was for a pin attempt on armor or weapons. It was 220 cron stones and I think they lowered that. So to protect your tet... Um, piece of equipment it's 220 million unless you buy your crons at the blacksmith and then it's 440 million so once again you just have to figure out if cron stones are something that you would want I'm starting at with two outfits so far as what I have so right out of the gate I'm gonna be working with 660 crons which should be I don't know the new numbers I I'm pretty sure they lowered it it's um, so like 180 or 190 instead of 220. Hopefully that's the case because I could get almost four pin attempts out of just this. Or maybe if I feel like getting my accessories to tent using cron stones, I can go ahead and do that. But once again, you have to figure out what's more valuable to you. Like I said, my goal is to get full pin in week one of season two. The next thing you should go ahead and get early is going to be the Changa. Tome of Wisdom, and whatever that uh, S word is, Shere Khan, Tome of Wisdom. Um, if you already have one, you can transfer it using storages to any character. You only need to get it once. If you don't have it, it is a level 53 
quest. And if you go under main, or no, suggested, find the level 53. It's called the Adventurer's Tomb regarding the legend of Changa. And it's a fairly long quest line. Um, it takes... Two of my friends just did it. It took one of them about an hour and 15 minutes. His max energy was only 50. And it took the other guy an hour. And his max energy was 120. You're going to need a total of 180 energy. So if your max energy is lower than 180, you're going to have to buy energy potions off the marketplace. What the Changa does is it gives you 30% extra combat experience from quests. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually just enough to make it to where you can quest through um, the Camasylvia and the Dragon areas to hit level 61. And I am not a huge fan of grinding monsters, so I usually quest from 56 to 61. Um, and by grinding, I do have areas that I like to grind, but at that level, like with the AP that I'm going to have, it's just not fun. The areas that are would be best for me. And you start at Brelin Farm. So it starts right here, and then pretty much on the left, and then underneath this mountain range, all the quests in that area will give extra experience. And you want to start those when you're 59, because there's pretty much, there's more than enough to get to 61. But like with a really smooth flow, you'll get to 61 in about 2 hours and 15 minutes from 59. It takes about an hour to hit 60, and then about an hour and 15 minutes to hit 61 if you're kind of just banging these quests out. The next thing for new players that you might want to look at is getting a good horse. And ignore these numbers, well not these, but ignore this number like for that and like even for a lot of tier 8 horses you don't need to spend 200 million on a decent horse when looking for a good horse to kind of run you around the map you only need three skills you need drift sprint drift is right here you need sprint and you need instant excel so i would recommend finding a horse that has drift uh, sprint and instant excel that are pr either maxed or pretty close to being maxed and for example, like we can even go to, it's like a tier four. Okay, he doesn't have it, but his drift. Okay, so not that one. Let's go to tier five. This guy has drift. This guy has instant excel and uh, sprint. So he has everything you need, and he only costs 80 million. Um, this one actually has drift maxed out, instant excel maxed out, and sprint maxed out. He's only 56 million. The reason why you want those skills is because the instant excel is going to give you a boost like that and then the drift resets it so you can be going around the map drift instant excel drift instant excel and just like zoom from one end of the map to the other so as long as you have those three skills your horse is going to be very fast the last major point i want to talk about is quest gear because if you have this quest gear, as you'll notice, um, these can be equipped on seasonal characters. And there's quite a few pieces of quest gear that are very, very good. So the rock hard belt that you get, or the rock heart belt that you get, is, as you can see, it's only 2 AP lower than a pin to violet belt. This belt is acquired through Dragon Questline. The Red Sands Crystal Ring, which is acquired, I'm pretty sure, through Valencia. Yeah, it's obtained through Valencia, the first, Valencia 1. Quest sign, you can get one of these. And the Tri Forest Earring, they don't come at Tri, you have to get freed Magical Blackstones. They, the quests give you those as well. And there's no way to make them or buy them or anything. It's um, If you run out, like if you don't get it to Tri, by the time you're out of stones, you can do a recurring daily quest for up materials and that will give you one of the stones you need to upgrade it and a Kafra stone worth about 2.8 million but these through the Camasylvia quest line you can actually get two and as you can see it's one accuracy lower and it's two AP lower but it gives you two extra AP against monsters and a little bit of max health and you can get two of these so as soon as you're level one and you start your seasonal your new seasonal you can equip all this stuff there's two other things that I would suggest getting 
and unfortunately I threw mine away so I'm gonna have to work on getting those again before season two starts and that is the honorary combatants clubs the DP on this is 38 so on my gloves pin gloves the DP is 55 so you can imagine like that will save you a lot of heartache by trying to like push this to you know pry or duo as fast as you can because you can kind of do it at your own pace once you get these gloves the next thing is the Valiant Catan's boots and these give you 36 DP which once again is very good it gives you some movement speed as well and some damage reduction now obviously Tuvala and Tri Tet and Pen is going to be better but being able to equip these right out of the gate as soon as you start will be very valuable and will put you above everybody else There are three kind of small points that I want to talk about. The first one is going to be in regards to the stones. You can't start stacking these stones right now because when the season ends, it's going to take them out of your inventory. So I'm assuming it's going to take the season pills as well, but maybe you could stack those. Um, either way, you can't stack the Zavala or the refined stones and the time-filled black stones because it's going to take them out of your inventory and delete them so there's really no materials for the season server that you can start prepping right now for season two the next thing is going to be silver so you kind of want to get um, a small daily rotation down in regards to how to how you're going to make your silver and that can consist of a number of different things or just one thing whatever is most profitable for you so you kind of want to build some silver up specifically so you can Say you need like five cron stones for something and like you just don't want to mess with it. You just want it to enhance or at least not de-enhance a little bit. Go down a level or explode. You can you have the 10 million silver to go buy five cron stones from the blacksmith. Or you have silver to, let's say, put into some scrolls. That way, once you reach the proper AP, you can do this for an hour or two and make really good money. So just having a little bit of silver for that, um, I would suggest probably saving up 400 million and pre-ordering an outfit and getting some cron stones or pre-order an outfit you want, type in chat, you know, that you have a pre-order up and hopefully somebody sells it to you. And then for whatever outfit you're using, you can turn those into crons or whatever. Um, if crons aren't a big deal to you, then, or you don't plan on using them for your seasonal character, then you don't have to really have to worry about building up your silver, but it is still good to have a little stockpile saved up for when it starts because there are a lot of little things that you might need money for here and there and versus stunting your progression by going and making money, you already have a little bit of money and you can just push forward using that. Speaking of money, I would suggest picking up at least one life skill and that is farming. You can click your magnifying glass in the top and type in strong fence. And if you have a hundred available contribution points, you can go to any of these vendors and rent 10 strong fences. And you can get your um, farming up to artisan in one day. Once it reaches artisan, you make around 60 to 70 million a day by farming. And there are plenty of amazing farming guides on YouTube that are available to you. And 60, and it's very low effort. Like, uh, aside from the day you spend getting to Artisan, you really only spend 20 or 30 minutes messing with it a day, and it will net you that much money. So that is uh, something really good to do. Well, it also depends on how long you play. If you're only playing for like two hours, then you're going to be making, you know, maybe 20 million a day, 15, maybe even 10 sometimes, depending on RNG. Um, because it's something that will sit there, and then after... Mine are 2 hours and 15 minutes. So after 2 hours and 15 minutes, you go and you pick it all up and then you replant stuff. And that's it. And then you just switch characters or whatever or go back to what you were doing. But it can give you quite a bit of money. The second one I do, which is about the same, about 60 or 70 million a day, is I do Imperial Cooking. And getting to Master, you can also do in one day if you have around 150 to 200 million to buy a bunch of ingredients with. You can overstack your horse, and um, I did mine through vinegar, which potatoes, 
you just put pre-orders on potatoes. Once you get a bunch of potatoes, you buy strawberries from a lady right here inside this building. And she's one of the few vendors that actually sell fruits and vegetables. So then you just use that stuff to make vinegar nonstop until you hit artisan or master. Artisan is where you start making some money. And then master, you start making a little bit more money. So that alone can get you 150 you know, or if you cook other things as well, sometimes 200 million a day just by doing those things. And in total, that's going to be about an hour and a half of time to make that much money. So, you know, across five days, you're making a billion every five days. Another life skill that's really good um, or a good idea, I don't know if I would recommend doing it on a seasonal unless you want to. But if you make a shy, they start at professional gathering and you can gather meat on your shy and get a decent amount of money doing that for lower AP and lower DP where you can't really go to good you know grinding areas you are gonna make more money by um, just farming meat and the be best place to farm meat is right outside Western Guard Camp there's a pack of wolves over here and that will get you quite a bit of money as well I didn't get into gathering before my AP got high enough to grind and make more money at other spots, but early on it is very good. All right, so that's it for the prep video. Um, since I'm trying to streamline my progress, my progression, and finish season two in one week, I will probably make daily videos, or maybe every other day. Uh, explaining what I'm doing and then we'll really dig into fail stacking and when I choose to use crons and versus when I just kind of smash it together and then I'll have a completely optimized um, way of collecting and what resources to collect off your weeklies which is very very important if you want to progress quickly if you you know just pick time filled stones every single time that will hinder your progress if you just pick refined it'll hinder it if you just picked or it'll hinder it and then so on and so forth so if you have any questions or want me to go over anything just leave a comment and be sure to like and subscribe it will uh, help me with youtube's algorithm and show it to more new players since um there's not really a lot of people making videos for new players in regards to the seasonal server which is a great mechanic to get your AP really high and your defense really high um, soft cap in a very short amount of time